how to use geometry nodes in order to control the scale of objects. Let's find out. In my last video, you might have seen that I used noise texture, proximity and all that stuff inside of geometry nodes in order to control the scale of the grass assets that are around the perfume bottle. And some of you asked me how I did it and I'm here to explain myself today. So I created a little video tutorial for you. It's very simple and very easily achieved because geometry nodes are just awesome. And it's fun to do it. Before we do, please make sure that you have hit like and subscribe and the little bell as well because that helps me to grow this channel now. <laughs> Thank you. Let's get into it. So I have three collections that you can see over in the outliner. And if you zoom in, you see that there are three groups of grass or two groups of grass and one group of daisy flowers. So these assets are from Graswald 3D, as I believe that they are pronounced German. In English, it would sound like Gras, Graswald, Graswald 3D. Uh, check out their website, you will find amazing assets that you can use for all of your projects. I believe um, these are the best assets on the internet currently available. I'm not absolutely sure about that. If you have even better recommendations, please post in the comments. But as far as I know, these are really like the best ones that you could get. And I believe also that they are quite affordable. I mean, I got this library for now, the library volume one, and you can have this for a hundred bucks. So. If you, if you work with commercial projects, I would really say that this is a must have. However, if you want to have free assets, you can also go to maxtree.org and under the high poly tab, you can search for free or you can look after the free filter. And there you will find one collection, Plant Models Volume 60, that is currently at least completely free. And I got this too for my other projects. And I believe that these assets are also very, very good. So you can have this for free. You only have to create an account on their website and then you can download it for Blender, which is very convenient. So this is just for starters. If you want to have assets to follow me through this tutorial, you can go with either of these resources. Okay, so now let's start. Um, yeah, we need geometry nodes because everything is made in geometry nodes in this tutorial. And the first thing is I will delete my cube and add in a plane. And the whole scene will be like on this, on this very plane. So I scale it up a little bit. I apply the rotation and scale. And I hop over to my geometry nodes tab, which is my favorite tab in Blender. No, it's not true. Shading is also amazing. Anyways, I click on new. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to displace the ground so it is not so flat. Like this is very unusual. <laughs> it's very unnatural looking if it is flat, like 100%. So the first thing is I would go into tip, into edit mode and subdivide it at least. I mean like at least three or four times. This gives a good, a good base for starting. I will also do a subdivision inside of the geometry nodes in order to even increase the subdivision. So I can do shift A and S, which gives us the search bar. And here we can search for all the nice nodes and geometry nodes. And I look for subdivide mesh, put that in and click on two. I think that's, that's completely sufficient for starters. And then I go shift A and S and I will, um, I look for set position. And if you click on this little diamond and you pull it to the left, you can search for a node. And if you apply that node, it will be automatically connected, which is very convenient. So look for noise texture, add in a noise as you would usually do with displacement maps. And there you see it, there is something happening, but it does not look right. But we will fix that in a second. The first thing that we're gonna do is add a vector math input. Place this in here, change the add to subtract and type in 0.5 on all three values. Yeah, this, and don't ask me, this is just to, to keep the plane in the right position. So if you do any displacements, this is like a, yeah, like a standard operation. And now you see that the displacement is not going upwards only in a Y axis, but also in a Z and the X axis. And that gives us a very strange distorted um, result. And we can fix that also with a vector math node, because if you were a very attentive student back in school, you might remember that everything multiplied by zero equals zero. So if we would multiply the X and the Y axis by zero, they would of course not be displaced. All right, so let's do this. Simply add in a vector, mo uh, vector math node, 
change it to multiply and now we have everything on zero and we simply need to increase the x-axis like this or like this and there is something happening and now it looks correct and yeah let me play around with the values i want a very subtle effect i don't want to have it very so heavy as it is right now this looks much better yeah maybe that is okay you can also change this to 4d and then you can have like a the w value is like a seed i would say and i believe something where there's a little hill in the middle would be nice Okay, not really a hill, but I think that is good enough. And you can also increase the effect of it, of course, if you just increase the number of your multiplier. So you can really like go crazy like this and create a little mountain. But I don't want this for now, but for four is okay. All right, very, very nice. So this is for our base mesh. Right now, we are want to distribute our grass assets on that surface which is very easily achieved in geometry nodes. You need two nodes for starters, which is at first the distribute points on faces node, which is that one, and you need the instance on points node. So no, we see nothing that is completely right. We will now drag in one of our collections and I will start with the big clumps, right? The big grass, put the geometry into instance. And here we go, this looks like something, I will now add in a join geometry at the end of it because I want to maintain my original geometry. And if I go from here, I would have a flat plane because the subdivision, uh, yeah, the subdivision and the displacement is being applied after this node. So I would have to go from here in order to maintain my original plane and make sure that you have hit these two checkboxes in order to distribute them on the right uh, position. All right, this looks all, yeah, this looks already like something. Um, two very important things is, of course, the first thing is we need rotation. Grass does not look that uniform. So if you click this, uh, this diamond, pull it to the left and simply type in random, you will find random value. Random value is exactly what we want. And we leave the X and Y on zero. And Z axis, you type simply in P times two, it's like formula, and you will get a perfect rotation, perfect 360 degrees, I believe. And you can also do a very slight rotation on these axes, just in order to make it a little bit more random. I believe that makes it look more natural. Then you can close this and like park it somewhere like there, because we don't want to touch this anymore. And we also have to think about the scale. Um, it kind of works in the same way. You simply type in random, random, random value. Here we go. Connect this to scale and then we have random grass from very, very little, tiny, funny mini grasses up to very big Goliath grasses. So that's too crazy of a difference. So I will type in 0.6 to 1 and that is all right. Good, good, that's good for now. So um, the, the distribute points on faces node will give us control over where these things are to be displayed. So you can go to poison disk, you can type in an even bigger number, you can tell him which, yeah, which distance they have to have between each other. Good, but yeah, just choose a value of your liking. I will go with 20 for now because I will also, or 15, I will also add in the other groups right now so what we can do for this is you know maybe i can tidy this up a little bit i will add in a frame so we see better what's going on and these can go into the f these can go into the frame and i will rename that frame underground and this is my first instance of of grass and so I take this over and then name this big grass and all of these guys can go in there. And then we have our big, big grass. Uh, we also need small grass so we can simply copy this over with shift D and then you have it here there. And then we can change our big clump into small clump because I want to have also very like, they are like very short grass because the spot where I laid that perfume bottle is meant to be 
uh, yeah, smaller. So if you, you know, if you have all these um, long grasses growing into the bottle, that would not look very good. I want to have a very, like a very flat underground. So the bottle is to be seen very good and clearly. And that is why I want to have small grass assets as well. And then the process is very, very similar. You simply connect these, these, the, the outcome of this second group into the joint geometry and you, we have to have the same uh, surface as a start mesh. And of course we have to change the seed because yeah, they need different spots to grow on. And you can also increase the number and decrease the distance because this is like very, this can be very intense like that. Yeah, that's actually almost it. And then we need our daisy flowers. So I do this a third time, copy this over. You can also do a control shift D copy and it will already be connected with the incoming node. And then you only have to connect this to the joint geometry and then you are done. And now we are choosing our daisy flower for this, of course. And this has to be less crazy. And this has to be also, yeah, I go with something like this for starters. And let me check this in my preview for now in order to see what is actually going on here. So I change to cycles to GPU rendering and I add in a little environment HDRI that I got from HDRI Haven. Spiky and Hill, my favorite one for just for starting out. Always looks very natural. Yeah. And here we go. Let me blend out the environment so we can concentrate on our seat. That looks great. All done with geometry nodes. And I don't know how long this was, but I guess it was just a few minutes. So this is very easily accomplished. Good. Let me add in my perfume bottle in order to have something that I can use as a proximity driver. Yeah, I take my Daisy perfume bottle, which I used earlier. Like switch back to my geometry node setup. So like that. Lay it in the dust. Yeah, I believe my plane is a bit too big. I will make it smaller just to have a better viewport performance. And I apply the rotation and scale, of course, and then, yeah, that's much better. So now, how can we create something that drives the scale of the grass? So everything that is around that bottle will be smaller, so you have a clear view onto that bottle. So this is the next big, big thing that we are going to do right now. So hop back into the geometry nodes, and we will now go to set up the proximity. So for that, we at first need the perfume bottle as a driver. And in here we click on right away on relative, that's important. And you add in the node, shift A and S, geometry proximity. There it is. Connect geometry to target. And as next point is that we need to have the position and multiply that position with a vector math node with the distance, this is a little bit complicated. I don't know exactly how it works, to be honest, but I know it works and that sometimes is enough. And next you add in a, another multiply node, put this to multiply, add in the first value and the second value will be, for example, the size of our grass. And if you go into the big grass, you see that we already set this up with scale. Here's our math node. So we only have to combine these two guys and multiply them with, with each other. And then you put this new node into the scale and boom, there you have it. Wow, I love this. Geometry nodes are just awesome. So now we can play around with this value. If you have like, this is too much space or whatever, um, you can add in a color, a color ramp, for example. I think you can also do this with a float curve. However, I like the color ramp and you see here we are able to change the size of the grass that is directly surrounding our perfume bottle. If the size is not big enough for you, you can also increase it here. Um, yeah, you have a variety of possibilities. You can also add in another multiply node and take that, like the result of this whole operation and multiply it by 0.5, for example, to make it smaller by half size or whatever. So you are really like free to use this to drive the size of the surrounding areas. And if you believe that the space is not big enough, you can also add in a map range. And for that, you simply go to the from max and increase the value ever so slightly until you see 
that the outer parts of our plane are affected. This is like a, yeah, it's actually like a filter and it narrows the value that goes in there down to zero and one. If you would have one, two, three, four points that might come from this whole operation and you use a color ramp, which is only if we're only working from one to zero, this would like, yeah, take these four values into the scale of one to zero and uh, yeah, stay in this range so you can affect everything with the color ramp node. And now I want to have the same effect on the daisies because you see there are in there and I don't like it. So it's a very same process. You go into the daisy and you add in a vector math node. You plug it in between the scale and the random value and then you go to multiply and you take the outcome of our proximity operation and place it into here and you will see that these guys are disappearing. Um, you can also try to control this in various ways. So if you would like um, put a color ramp, a second color ramp into this connection to the daisy grass, you can individually scale these pieces without affecting the bigger grass. So yeah, you got a lot of opportunities here. Geometry nodes are a very fascinating tool. And I want to increase the density a bit so there's more to be seen in here. Yeah, that looks better. So for now, I would almost say that we are through with this whole tutorial. Um, let me increase the grass, the little grass a bit. And if I now go into preview, I should see something magnificent. Yes. This is magnificent. Awesome. Yep, 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 yep. So my spit out video, you might have seen that I also used something like a noise map in order to drive um, the scale and the size of the grass around it. So you have different patches or different areas where the grass has different sizes. Looks very nice. And you can do this very simply. You have to use this random value because that is going into our scale input. And we have to add in another multiplier in here. And we have to calculate that together with a noise texture and a color map. Put these two things together and put this together. And now there is a noise also driving the scale of a grass. And the only challenge now is to find out how. <laughs> yeah, now you see it. Now it works. So if you go up in higher values, it will be very subtle. The difference will not be very visible because it's like very tiny spots that are driving that. So if you go to a value below one, you might be able to create patches, patches or areas of grass growing bigger. And I would use the 4D in order to have something like a seed. And then you see you can control different areas with this, so I have to go in here in order to, to decrease the radius of our proximity. And then I yeah, have the possibility to, to do this like that. This is actually what I done what I have done in my spit out video. And it's a very simple way to create a little bit more of, of a natural feeling into a scene because grass is usually not the same size as there's different quality of soil and all that stuff. And so that leads to different sizes of grass. Good. I believe that I showed you everything that you would need to create such a scene. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have already clicked on the like button. If you have not, please do it right now, right away. And yeah, thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments section that would be very nice please subscribe to my channel all right so that's for today and i thank you for tuning in and bye bye see you next time